there is one question of role of intrathecal catheter after inadvertent dural puncture in thoracic levels. We have talked of putting the catheter after the dural puncture in the lumbar region. He has asked specifically what is the role in the thoracic regions. You know, I am not aware of any intrathecal catheter in thoracic uh, region, uh, but if any of you are did you read anything? If I didn't know, please forward it to me. But uh, the question is, if there is a, a wet tap in the thoracic region, you can give a blood patch in the lumbar area. And uh, so uh, you don't have to really put an intra, uh, I mean, thoracic, this, normally we use thoracic epidurals for post-operative pain. That is at least, you know, in our setup. And um, when that happens, when there's intrathecal, we just put a regular epidural. And most of the times, I've not seen patients getting headache after thoracic uh, epidurals. Probably it is because of the age of the patients, unlike, uh, you know, our, uh, and also they are supine, they have uh, surgery and they are on the bed f following surgery. So, but the lumbar epidurals has been given successfully for, uh, for thoracic uh, wet taps. And just one question, one thing about Leray Wandam, he was our uh, first chairman for Department of Anesthesia, Brigham and Women's Hospital. And he was associated with the first kidney transplant that was done in uh, 1954. While giving a blood patch, what should be the position? It is lateral or in yeah. a sitting position? Yeah, I wanted to touch all these things in my lecture, but you know, the clock was threatening me, the behind. <laughs> so normally, it is preferable to give the wet, uh, blood patches in the lateral positions. And the reason is obvious because patients have discomfort. When you sit them up, they have pain. But there are exceptions to the rule. Some of these wet taps occur in a you know, little bit of difficult epidurals uh, thing. So sitting position becomes easier. So what I do sometimes is if the, if the patient looks straight forward spine for me, I just do it on the lateral side. But some patients, I make them sit. Uh, usually I put a pillow and then have them rest and I put the oxygen mask, IV fluids are flowing. And I'm a little different from my colleagues. I'm a little bit of a heavy handed in sedating these patients. I do give one milligram of midazolam, 50 mics of fentanyl, observe the patient and then do the blood patch. And they feel very comfortable, not to the point of, of course, knocking away completely. You have to judge the dose depending upon which patient you're dealing, I mean, you're, de uh, you're dealing here. What is the volume of blood that you're going to inject? Uh, normally, the way I practice is, you know, I, I keep giving 5 cc increments as the patient gets a little bit of pressure. And again, I give 5 cc. When the pressure is continuous, then that is the time I usually stop. But having said that, as I said, recently they published a study with 20, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, and they found marginally better results with 20 ml of blood. Is there any chance of arachinoiditis after the blood patch? Yes, that is what uh, I said. They do get some sort of a chemical arachinoiditis. It is actually, it is, well, you shouldn't call it, it is actually aseptic arachinoiditis. It is actually because of irritation by the blood, just like subarachnoid hemorrhage. There is a blood that is can go into the, uh, into the CSF and they can get, in fact, uh, we published a case report from our department. One thing which I did not tell in my lecture was, if the wet tap occurs in a morbidly obese patient, the incidence of headache is very low. So that is why sometimes we actually put a continuous spinals for cesarean section. And I tell my residents, let this, Caesarean section be done, we'll worry about the headache later, you know, or someone else will worry about head, head headache. At least let us get our job done here. But to tell you the truth, the incidence of postural puncture headache is lower in morbidly obese patients. And, but we had one case where we had to do multiple spinal attempts, morbidly obese. She did develop headache to the point of giving a blood patch. And there she complained of severe back pain, almost going to the neck. All investigations are done. They said there was little blood in the, uh, you know, in the subarachnoid fluid, but she got better. So yes, blood can enter uh, CSF and they get back pain. That is why I, I always tell them that you will get back pain, put some hot water bags, 
and you know take some analgesics for that and Dr. Usually Bhavani, we, we may land in another situation while going to give that blood patch you can get a wet tap we can get another tapping yeah it has happened i mean you know yes <laughs> No, actually we have not done any randomized study on that and uh, they seem to... Uh, because a couple of times I have encountered CSF drops coming to the needle. Oh, no, 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 CSF drops, oh, this... So the needle is in the epidural space. Right. The space is flooded with uh, CSF because of the... Exactly, that is the thing. You, yes, yes. See, we use saline. I don't know what you are using for, epi for blood patches. You use saline, right? For blood patches, I use everything so that's fine so you know we use saline because we don't want to inject any air and you get some fluid it could be saline fluid or things sometimes yes the CSF can collect there and you see the needle you see some drops coming it is not really a wet tap there it is just that the collected fluid usually it stops but sometimes actually we had I think one or two cases where there was a frank wet tap and they did they actually abandoned the procedure in that uh, patient and uh, subsequently it was done under fluoroscopy. So. And if you get another. Our question was actually that when you put the blood patch in the sitting position, because of the increased pressure, it's yeah. more CSF leak. Yeah. And there is a possibility of your blood getting diluted, so not actually able to uh, I don't know if there's any evidence. Actually, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kamen is here uh, in the audience. Do you, are you, do you remember anything about sitting versus lateral on the success of blood patch? Yeah, but I don't think there is any study, you know, at least, at least which I read. You know, so. But if during giving a blood patch we go again for a tapping, wet tap, what to do at that particular situation? As I said, you know, we, we actually abandoned the procedure there and subsequent, the following day, we actually have these patients done under fluoroscopy so that they're very definite, identify the epidural space and then inject the... Uh, no, no. In fact, uh, you know, during our workshop, the question came. Vaguely, I remember that in Europe, that was the practice. They used to draw some blood for the blood cultures, but no, I believe they have also stopped now. They have stopped now. So. No, it's about, no, it will happen. That's what I showed the results. It's 50% versus 68%. So there is a 17% difference, but statistically not significant. But still the incidence is low. That's why I said you have to use your judgment. We abandoned the procedure. We are not leaving any catheters. We were very enthusiastic about this. See, if we can do anything to de reduce the postural puncture headache, it is a really a great thing because it is a suffering for the patient. You know, they have this newborn. But unfortunately, there is still nothing has come up where it can totally abolish that muscle. There is, there is another question. We are mostly concentrating on the post-dural puncture headache. But Madam has given a clear range of postpartum headache. And I want to know, Madam, and Dr. Vani Shankar, what is the role of triphoporogen and anti-cyclic, tricyclic antidepressant? the role of the red drug in the whole range of post-partum headache? Uh, well, <clears throat> the role of tricyclic antidepressants doesn't come initially in this. You just give simple analgesics, not the TCAs. TCAs usually come in the chronic pain category. So what they say is, you get the, pa the patient is there, you take a history. If she has a similar headache before, as we said, and the s same symptoms have recurred, just consider it as the same headache and just ask her whatever analgesics she was taking. Or if it's a new headache, but just simple headache, no focal signs, and it's only symptomatic, you treat it as a primary headache and give analgesics. If she does not improve with those analgesics and you do get some focal signs, then you start investigating. And of course, if the dural puncture has taken place or if you've given a regional, then you can start treating her as a PDPH. But then involve the a, a neurologist and then do uh, neurological imaging as well. So TCAs are not initially. 
Thank, thank, like you, speaker, thank you, speakers.